What's up everyone? I'm Matt and thanks for watching Ozark Overland Adventures. Kara just got back from her weekend solo trip to Kentucky. We are uh, airing out her rooftop tent right now just to, you know, because condensation builds up and when you get back from a trip, airing out your tent is always a good thing to do. Um, but as we have, you know, just been tinkering around the Jeeps and, you know, doing little, doing little things like that, um, it got me thinking about how we have built these Jeeps. When we got both of these Jeeps, we knew exactly how they were gonna be wheeled, we knew how they were gonna be built and for the purpose that they were gonna be built. And, and, and that's what we did. But it got me thinking about, you know, all the different ways that people can build up a Jeep, be it a Gladiator or a Wrangler. and just how much money people waste. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for overland adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade portable awning. And when it comes to off-road vehicles on the road today, I mean, can you get one any more iconic than a Jeep Wrangler? And now by extension, a Gladiator, because I mean, let's be real, Gladiator's just a Wrangler with a truck, but but I, I, don't, I don't think so. And I know some people that will argue with me on that one, but you know, the, the Wrangler has been around for so, so long. It's, it's foundation in the, in the previous CJs. Uh, I mean, they span decades. I, I don't think there, there's not another vehicle with as much aftermarket support as, as the Wrangler and Gladiator. Uh, it's just incredible the amount of stuff that companies make for these things. I don't think there's another off-road rig that's as customizable as this. I don't know that there's another vehicle, period, that is as customizable as a Wrangler and a Gladiator. And that definitely comes with its, its good points and its bad points, but there is no shortage of ways of how you can build a Wrangler or a Gladiator to, to suit your needs and, and budget, really. It, I mean, you can get full, you know, winch capable bumpers for just a, a couple hundred dollars. You can spend well over a thousand dollars on, on nice bumpers. Um, lifts, you, you can get, you know, you can lift a, a Wrangler two and a half inches for just a couple hundred bucks, or you can spend, you know, five, six grand on a lift kit uh, for this. So the sky's the limit on how much you can customize these things. Um, but that also opens up some horrible choices that people make. <laughs> Just to be real, I'm gonna be real transparent here. Probably gonna ruff, ruffle some feathers in this video, but this comes out of years of experience of owning these vehicles. Uh, between my wife and I, we have owned a total of five Wranglers and one Gladiator. Um, I have owned two Wranglers. I uh, started with a 2008 JKU Sahara, Got a 2012 JKU Rubicon, now have the 2021 Gladiator. My wife started with a 2014 two-door JK Sport. Then she got a 2015 JKU Sahara and brief stint with a, a Grand Cherokee thrown in there and now has the 2021 uh, Wrangler Rubicon uh, Extreme Recon package. And so having all those Jeeps, having built them all completely different ways, completely different mentalities, um, I think we've learned some lessons. From all the experiences we've had, I think there's a lot of ways that people waste money building a Jeep. And this is all my opinion, so I'm sure people will argue with me in the comments, and that's fine. Uh, but this comes from years of experience building them and building them for a purpose. Um, and that is very capable off-road rigs. Um, I will say if you intentionally, and there's no shame in this, just, you know, there's no shame in this, just own it. But if you are building a mall crawler, if you're building a pavement princess and have no intention of taking yours off road, but you just want it to, to look awesome, 
um, then take everything that I'm going to say and reverse it. Everything I say to not spend money on, just go ahead and spend the money there because that's going to be the best mall crawler that you can get. Um, but I think one of, the, one of the key areas that people waste a lot of money on is lights. And I say that with the very expensive KC Gravity Pro 6 light bar in the background, and that's on purpose. If you have seen previous videos about the build of the Gladiator, um, my wife bought that before we were married against my recommendation, but we have it. It's very nice. It does put out a crap ton of light, and so I, I have it. Um, but people just go ridiculous on lights, and most of the people never wheel at night. I mean, people are putting, you know, two 50 50 inch light bars on top of their Jeep. Two of them, because the light output from one isn't enough. And then they stack a, a, you know, a 20 or a 30 inch on the hood, which has got to be the worst possible place you could put a light bar, because 50% of that light output is being wasted and blocked by your hood. I, I don't understand that. Uh, and it, it also blocks some visibility as well. So a light bar on the hood, horrible mistake. Um, then they put you know, one or two cubes on each A-pillar. Then they come to the bumper and add lights here. So, and they're not even wheeling at night. So it's just for looks. Um, but we, we have outfitted ours um, very intentionally uh, because I had the light bar, I'm using the light bar. And then from there, I've got uh, the little uh, Denali's D4 cubes. Um, those are shooting out to the side because we do wheel at night. So I want proper light. I have learned the lesson of how hard it is to find some of the trails at night uh, when they're tight. And so I've got these lights as, as side shooters. And then because the bumper kind of required it, I've got the Baja Designs S1 that um, if the bumper didn't require it, I wouldn't have them. And then we both got rock lights because like I said, we wheel at night. Caro kept it very simple. Um, just a couple Casey Slimlines, two Casey Gravities in the front and a flood pattern. And that's, uh, that's what she's got. So. Uh, but don't, don't waste your money on lights, especially if you're not wheeling at night. Um, if, if I didn't have the KC, I would put a 12 inch light bar just up here on the front with the two side shooters. And that would be all I would have. Um, cause that is plenty of light. I had that set up on my, my black JK Rubicon and that was, I had a light bar too, but I didn't ever use it. Um, cause I didn't know better. So. If, if you're going lights, you know, if you're gonna wheel at night and wanna do that, just, just get a, a 12 inch light bar for the bumper, a couple side shooters to fill in the edges and you're gonna be golden. Let's talk wheels and tires. Um, for some reason, I think these are people who don't, who don't know any better and don't have the experience off-roading. But you see a lot of Jeeps rolling around on 20 inch, sometimes bigger wheels and you know 33 35 inch tires which a 35 on a 20 inch wheel that's a i would call that almost a low profile tire that is a horrible combination if you are actually off-roading your vehicle and the reason being is when you're off-roading you want to be able to air down your tires and you, you want you want a lot of sidewall so i'm running a 17 inch wheel a 38 inch tire as you see, I've got a lot of sidewall here. I think a 17 inch wheel is the best way to go. It's, it's kind of the sweet spot, especially with, with newer vehicles. It's, you can't really get a much smaller wheel on a, on a new, on a Jeep. Uh, but a 17 inch wheel, you got the most tire size options. They're cheaper than 18 or 20 inch wheel size tires. And it gives you a good amount of sidewall to air down, get that extra traction, get that extra comfort from being aired down, and it performs excellent off-road. If you're running a 20-inch wheel, 22-inch, God forbid a 24, um, and, and you take that off-road and air down, it, it's not gonna be comfortable. You're not gonna get hardly any sidewall flex out of it, and it's just, it's not a good combination to go with. So don't waste your money on anything other than a 17 inch wheel. Another key area that I think people just waste their money on building out their Jeeps is in the suspension. And honestly, not buying expensive lift kits, but buying cheap ones. I say it all the time, do not cheap out on the most important thing that determines how your Jeep rides and handles both on and off road. The worst thing you can do is to buy a cheap lift for your Jeep. 
um, especially if it starts with the words rough country. Uh, just, just save up your money, invest in a quality lift. Uh, if you go cheap on your lift, you're going to hate your life eventually. Um, there's obviously people out there that's like, oh, I've run country on every Jeep since, you know, 20 years and this ride's just great. Well, I'm sorry your standards are so low. But those who say, oh, the handling, all that sort of stuff, it, the poor handling, the, the poor ride quality, oh, it's just a Jeep thing. Well, they've never had a quality lift on their Jeep. Um, I started out with a cheap lift on my, my, first, uh, my first JKU. And it, it, I paid the price for it, even with just a small lift. If you don't have uh, something like adjustable lower control arms to correct your, your geometry and your caster, then your Jeep, when you hit a bump, it's gonna dart and it's gonna wander. Um, if you have a quality lift that includes all the necessary components to dial in that geometry, then it's not gonna dart, it's not gonna wander. It's gonna drive straight when you take your hands off the wheels. Uh, you know, I can drive 85 down the interstate and it will drive straight and true. My wife can too, because we went with quality lifts on our Jeeps and it makes a massive difference. Do not buy a cheap lift. I have had both and the difference is night and day in the quality of the ride and performance and handling of your Jeep. So do, do not waste your money on cheap lifts. Spend your money on a good quality lift. And since we are talking lifts, uh, let's go ahead and talk about steering stabilizers. This is uh, my wife's. Uh, she has wheeled the crap out of this thing. She has driven it all over the country. And this is still the factory steering stabilizer. It makes me a little sad to see people who have spent the money on dual steering stabilizers. That, that you know, they, they look all fancy, they look cool. Great if you're building a mall crawler, just go ahead and do it because it looks cool. But if your Jeep is set up properly, you don't even need a steering stabilizer. All a steering stabilizer does is dampen bumps, dampen uh, what's called bump steer. That's what it's made for. You, you hit like the transitions uh, from road to bridge. You hit that little bump. Um, your, your Jeep will, because it's a solid front axle, will, will want to pull or, or dart just a little bit from hitting that, from hitting that bump at high speed and a steering stable is to mitigate that. Um, if you are running a Jeep that's set up properly without a steering stabilizer, you'll still get the bump steer, but it's not, it, you can control that no problem. If anyone tells you, hey, my front ends, I've got a wobble, I've got some play, starting to get death wobble, um, and if anyone recommends, get a new steering stabilizer, get a dual steering stabilizer, that'll, that'll fix it. Um, block them on social media, punch them in the throat, run away from them, ban them from all forms of contact because people do not have a clue what they're talking about. Steering stabilizers do not fix anything. If you are having a problem with your steering or up here on the front end, the steering stabilizer is not the answer. Um, I, have, I have wheeled Jeeps of mine in the past with no steering stabilizer. Um, or I actually was wheeling my Gladiator for a while with a busted steering stabilizer. I didn't even know it but it was busted and when I took it off, it just flopped around in there and it wasn't doing any good. But my suspension was dialed into the point that it didn't matter. The factory steering stabilizer, if everything's set up right, is all you need. If you're having issues, your steering stabilizer is not the problem. You're, you've got other issues. Maybe tie rod ends are loose or control arm bushings are gone bad or you know drag links loose or something like that. Ball joints may be bad. Uh, wheel hubs may be going bad, but it's, it's not your steering stabilizer. So don't waste your money on, uh, on fancy steering stabilizers or especially dual stabilizers. Just, just don't even, unless you're building a mall crawler and then they're cool. All right, this is one that sounds like a really good idea from the factory because with the, with the JLs and the JTs, Jeep started offering Gorilla Glass as an option for, for the windshields. Don't do it. Uh, don't if I mean we Kara's Jeep has Gorilla Glass because we bought it off a lot and that's what it came with so we didn't have we weren't custom building it ourselves but it came with Gorilla Glass well it's it's got a great big crack in it because because it's a Jeep windshield and they're angled up high and they're rock magnets and it's just part of the life and owning a Jeep is that you're going to get your windshield broken more often than not so it's just one of those maintenance things you save up your money and you replace your windshield we both have 
large cracks in her windshield. I do not have a Gorilla Glass. She does. Um, and it's just part of it. We will be replacing her windshield, not with Gorilla Glass, uh, just, just regular glass because it's, it's going to get hit by rocks again and it's going to, it's going to chip again and crack again. And this stuff is stupid expensive, like eight hundred eight to nine hundred dollars. And it's just a ma major waste of money. So if you're custom building your Jeep, don't, don't do Gorilla Glass. It's, it's not worth it at all, ever. Up next, um, another area where I think people waste money building a Jeep that they're going to wheel um, is, is fender flares. Um, I have never run anything but the factory flares on my Jeeps, and there's one very key reason. These things are made of plastic. They are attached by just a bunch of little plastic clips. So if I am, am wheeling and, you know, something bad happens and I, I smack into a tree, um, this is going, this is plastic, it's going to deform. Worst case scenario, it's going to pop off the Jeep. A couple plastic clips, I can easily pop it back on. Uh, so I, I think if you're gonna be wheeling your Jeep, keeping the factory flares, and if not the factory flares, at least going with aftermarket ones that are also plastic and have, have some give to it, um, I, I think that's the best way to go. Um, I think the mistake and the waste of money are those who decide to go with metal fender flares. And I mean, it sounds, it sounds reasonable, metal, it's, it's stronger, you don't have the, the flexing, you don't have the bending, and the, it, it's gonna look better, it's gonna you know, retain its shape better. And those are definitely some, you know, some pros to having the, the metal flares. But here's the issue. Like I said, this, you, you bump into a tree, you scrape it on a rock, it's gonna flex, it's gonna give, you, you know, it's, it's not going to do any more damage other than to your fender flare. And like I said, worst case scenario, it's gonna pop off. You go with a metal flare and you hit a tree, well, the metal flare is going to bend and be permanently damaged. Worst case scenario, that impact is gonna transfer the force into the body panel, and then you're gonna deform this and have issues with this as well. And that is, that, that is never good. Uh, it is, especially on the rear flares, those pivoting around trees and stuff, rocks, those are, uh, you know, those are obstacle magnets on, on the back end. But I have, you know, I've, Scraped mine on, on trees. I've kind of squished in the back from, you know, from time to time. And they just, they're plastic. They pop back into shape. If they pop off, they just pop them back on. Um, so I, I think the factory flares are, are the way to go if you're going to off-road it um, and risk potentially damaging the flares or other body parts. Uh, when you're wheeling it. So d don't waste your money on the, the, the metal fender flares. Just, just stick with the plastic. This next one, I don't even have an example to show you uh, because I, I don't own one and won't own one. And that's a high lift jack. Don't, don't waste your money on a high lift jack. There's so many better options out there. Um, if you need to do a trail repair, high lift jacks are stupid heavy. They're stupid bulky. There's, unless you have a gladiator can throw it in the bed, there's no really good location to mount them on a Wrangler. A lot of people will get hood mounts, uh, which I think is, is not a good idea. It blocks visibility. If you were in a wreck and that hood mount were to fail, um, then you've got this incredibly heavy projectile that's going to do some damage to the people in front of you if, if it broke loose. Um, I just carry the factory scissor jack. You, 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 they make little jack blocks. You, you take the block and you slide it under there and you jack it up under the axle the, where it's the lowest. And even with three inches, three and a half inches of lift and 38s, I can still jack up my tires if I need to change a flat or you know, do something like that with my factory scissor jack. I've done it before. The, I think the best solution and one that I honestly need to look into is just a good bottle jack. They're small, compact. They can fit in, in your tote or in, under your seat. But a bottle jack, I think, is the best option. So if you're going to carry something other than the factory jack, get a bottle jack. Don't don't mess with don't mess with the high lift. There, the, it's, it's something you're probably not going to use. Something you probably are not going to learn properly how to use. And there's just a lot of things that go 
to go into to operating a high lift jack properly and safely. And you know, if you if you just buying one to mount on the hood for show, uh, I mean, if you like I said, if you're gonna build a model crawler, you have to compete with okay, is the high lift going on the hood or is the you know 20 inch, 30 inch light bar going on the hood? Because that's a tough decision to make if you just build a mall crawler and want it to look cool, you know, on the street. But if you're, you know, building a, an off-road rig that you're going to wheel, just, just, just don't. I see this question asked a lot still in all the social media groups, especially from, especially from new jeepers, um, especially from new people new to off-road, not just jeepers, but but anyone new to off-road. And that is, what, uh, what's the best CB to buy? And, you know, it, it, this is the classic. It's, you know, it used to be the standard, but my, uh, my answer all the time to what's the best CB to buy is none of them. Um, CB's dead. That, there's, do not waste money buying a CB. I mean, if, if you just feel like you have to have one, just get the cheapest one you can. Uh, they're just, they're a pain in the butt to tune. Their sound quality is horrible. Range is, depends on your antenna and how good you tune it but not not awesome and a, a cb is just a waste of money uh, i highly recommend everyone um, gmrs gmrs is the new standard it is the new cb and it is the way to go the sound quality is excellent the range is good uh, you can get you know, different size GMRS radios. I'm rocking the Midland MXT 575, which is a 50 watt radio. Most of my friends run the 275, which is a 15 watt radio. I mean, even if you, uh, even if you, you know, just go the route of a handheld, um, you know, unless you're willing in big groups that get spaced apart, uh, you know, a handheld will, will serve you well. And these little, I can't remember what this brand is, what this model is, it's from Midland. Uh, this little Midland handheld, GMRS radio does a great job. Yes, you do have to have a license legally to operate, you know, with GMRS, but it's what, 35 bucks now? And it covers the whole family and there's not a test and it's for 10 years. So, I mean, that's a no brainer. 35 bucks investment for 10 years for the whole family. It's awesome. So, um, CB, these ancient relics of the past, don't waste your money on this. Uh, spend your money on a good quality GMRS radio, or even, or, or like I said, e even a handheld. This one may be the most controversial of all the ways to waste money on a Jeep. But, I mean, throughout the years, for as long as Jeeps have been around, since World War II, all the different models that went from the original military to the CJs, up to the Wranglers in the mid 90s to, to now the brand new JLs and JTs. The one thing that hasn't changed, the one thing that has remained the same on all of them that is the most iconic piece on any Jeep is the grill, the seven slot grill. This, I, I, this is sacred. If you're a Jeep lover, don't mess with the grill. Um, do not waste your money on an angry grill. I mean, just, just don't. Jeeps aren't angry. These, these are not angry vehicles. Um, th these are happy vehicles. You don't go to these amazing places that, that these Jeeps can take you to and see the amazing things that these allow you to and be angry. It's, just, it's a contradiction. Jeeps, Jeeps are happy vehicles, but people get, people just get dumb and they got you know the angry grills and my jeep's angry and i mean they the all different new designs of angriness on the front of your jeep and honestly they, they just look dumb um they either look like uh bane or the geico caveman or brack from space ghost or angry thomas the tank engine or there's even one that looks like some stupid fish thing uh but don't don't just don't mess with this. This, this, this you don't touch. Um, leave, leave the grill alone. Don't, don't touch the grill. Leave, don't, it's not an angry vehicle. And it looks dumb for your Jeep to be angry. So, And finally, on this list of, of how to waste your money building a Wrangler or a Gladiator, um, I, I think buying one and then not wheeling it 
is the biggest waste of money that anyone could ever do. And the reason being is if you're just gonna drive this on pavement, there are much better vehicles for driving on the pavement. I mean, as good as Jeep has done with the new, with the new Wranglers and the Gladiators and making them a lot more drivable and more comfortable on the road, they're still a solid axle Jeep. You, you can't get away from that. So if you are buying these to just drive on pavement and not take off road where they were meant to go and designed to do their best, then it's, that is a major waste of your money. These things aren't cheap. These things are not cheap at all. I mean, these are both 60,000 plus dollar rigs plus what we have invested in building them. And to, to, to have a vehicle this expensive that's designed to go off-road and is, eh, it's okay, but not great on-road, I mean, get a 4Runner. Um, get a, you know, get, some, get something else. Don't, don't buy a Jeep if all you're going to do is drive it on pavement. Uh, it, that's a horrible decision. I mean, yeah, it looks cool, you know, going to the grocery store with the top and doors off, but it's, it's not, that's not what they're made for. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's a bonus for when you're home and not going off-road is to take them you know, around town with the top and doors off. But if you're going, don't buy a Jeep just, just to drive on pavement. That is a huge, huge waste of money. Um, it's, they're not as comfortable as other vehicles. They, um, they're, just, they're just not because solid axles. So, so don't. Um, I hope with this video is that if you're considering building a Jeep or really any off-road rig, a lot of this applies to, um, hopefully this will save you some money, give you some pointers on where to spend your money and get the most bang for the buck, get the really the best quality build out of your Jeep um, and, and the best experience when you are out exploring amazing places that these things were designed to take you to. So do, do I absolutely love the Jeeps? both the Wrangler and the Gladiator. Yes, it is. They are the only vehicles that I will own because of the amazing places that they can take you to because of how crazy capable they are off-road and that the amount of customizability that you have with these things is just unreal. And the way that you can outfit these things is unreal. Um, so uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you would like the video, subscribe, check out our Patreon, go to shopoverlandapparel.com for our, uh, for our merchandise, and I'm wearing my, my newest t-shirt, Jeep, because nobody likes taking bypasses. So, um, and I, I don't like taking bypasses. So anyway, check out all that stuff, give us some YouTube love, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.